So guys, sciatica, one of the most common conditions we see in musculoskeletal physiotherapy. So in this video, we're gonna show you the anatomy of the sciatic nerve and tell you how that anatomy relates to symptoms that patients might present with. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. We've got our 3D anatomy model on the screen to show you all the key features of the sciatic nerve and how this relates to when your patient has sciatica. So let's go through it. So as you can imagine, the sciatic nerve is a super important nerve in the leg and it's one of the biggest as well. And therefore, it's no surprise that it has a lot of spinal innervation from different spine nerve roots. So we know that the sciatic nerve is derived from the L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 nerve roots. And in particular, we look at these L4, L5 and S1 levels as the most common ones that might get irritated when your patient has back pain. So for example, if your patient has a disc herniation at the L4, L5 or L5, S1 level, naturally that can compress on one of those nerve roots and irritate the sciatic nerve. So from there, we know that the sciatic nerve runs through an important part of the pelvis called the sciatic notch, and then it runs underneath or deep to a super important muscle, the piriformis muscle. Now, if you believe everything you see on social media, you'll think to yourself that the piriformis muscle is always compressing that sciatic nerve, causing symptoms of pain, pins and needles, numbness down the leg. However, the reality is, is that the piriformis muscle doesn't actually do it that often. Research has shown that there's loads of other structures such as the gamelli muscles, the obturator muscles, the ischiofemoral joint, the sacrotuberous ligament that all are present within that gluteal region and all could have an impact on the sciatic nerve. And so instead, a term that you'll see, have seen in the past, piriformis syndrome, has actually been replaced by deep gluteal pain syndrome. This idea that actually it could be any number of structures in the gluteal region that can cause sciatica, therefore it's more of an umbrella term. But in saying that, it's suggested that deep gluteal pain syndrome is only responsible for sciatica between 0.3 and 6% of the time. So not very often at all. So please do bear that in mind. So from there, we know that the sciatic nerve runs down the back of the leg. This is super important because it tells us that when patients have sciatica, it's pain in the back of the leg that they may experience with either a burning sensation, a shooting pain, an electric pain, or perhaps pins and needles or numbness in that region. So when patients come to you and say, yeah, I've got pain on the front of my leg, that isn't necessarily related to sciatica because the sciatic nerve doesn't run there. It runs down the back of the leg. And from there, the sciatic nerve branches into two really important divisions, which are the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve. And so what we're going to do is show you these two different divisions and how they might influence sciatica. So the tibial nerve is the first branch that we're going to talk about. And as you can see, it runs from the sciatic nerve straight down the back of the leg towards the foot and it innervates lots of key muscles in the back of the leg, such as the gastrocnemius muscle, the soleus muscle, and plantaris, the key plantar flexors of the foot, as well as, if we move further down the leg, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. So what do you notice about all those key muscles, apart from the fact that they're in the back of the leg? Well, the key thing is that they all have an influence on plantar flexion and foot flexion. Therefore, when our patients have sciatica, look out for if they have a weakness in the plantar flexion or foot flexion movements, because as you can see, the tibial nerve is the branch of the sciatic nerve, which supplies all of those key muscles. So therefore, look out for when your patients don't have that plantar flexion strength or when you ask them to do a heel raise and they can't push up onto their toes. Now you know why, it's because those muscles are innervated by the tibial nerve, a branch of the sciatic nerve, and when the sciatic nerve is dysfunctional, it means that those muscles don't get the strength that they need. 
Right, so let's head back to the posterior knee where we saw the sciatic nerve branching into the tibial nerve and the common perineal nerve. And let's look at the common perineal nerve in more detail. So this particular nerve divides further into two really important nerves, which are the deep perineal nerve and the superficial perineal nerve. Now you might also hear these different nerves described as the common fibular nerve, the deep fibular nerve and the superficial fibular nerve. You can use perineal or fibula. They both mean the same thing. You can use them both in your practice. Now, a really important phrase that I use to remember what the deep and superficial perineal nerve do in terms of muscle innovation. So the phrase is ADLs. Now, of course, you'll be very familiar that ADL sometimes stands for activities of daily living, but I also use it to remember anterior, deep, lateral, superficial. That tells me that the muscles of the anterior tibia are supplied by the deep perineal nerve and the lateral muscles around the fibula are supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. So anterior deep means that the anterior muscle supplied by deep perineal nerve, lateral superficial means the lateral muscle supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. So therefore, if we look at that deep perineal nerve in more detail, we can see that it innervates muscles like tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, and extensor digitorum longus. What do you notice about these? These are all dorsiflexors of the foot. So when your patient comes in with back pain, paining running down the leg, and they have a foot drop, now you know why. It's because the sciatic nerve goes on to supply the deep perineal nerve, and if the deep perineal nerve is dysfunctional, your patient will have a foot drop. So that is super important, a really important sign to look out for when your patient has sciatica. And then if we look at those lateral muscles, as we said, lateral superficial. So those lateral muscles are supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. So there we're thinking about muscles such as perineus longus and perineus brevis, also known as fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. And these muscles ever the foot. So again, if your patient presents with back pain, pain running down the leg, and they have weakness in eversion, now you know why. It's because the superficial perineal nerve innervates these important muscles, and when that nerve is dysfunctional, it means that they don't have that eversion strength. So finally, anterior, deep, lateral, superficial, to help you remember what those key nerves innervate, and of course, they both stem from the sciatic nerve. So a couple of other clinical observations to make. As we said earlier, the sciatic nerve is derived from the spinal levels L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. Therefore, we know that the ankle reflex supplies or tests the reflex at the spinal level S1, S2. And therefore, look out for when your patients have a reduction in this reflex when they have sciatica. And furthermore, when we think about the different dermatomal patterns, we can look at L4, which runs on the medial aspect of the tibia. We can see L5 runs from the fibula down towards the first digit, and S1 runs around the lateral surface of the foot. Now, most commonly, we see L5 and S1 dermatomes affected here. So if your patient has pins and needles and numbness running down to their foot, particularly the lateral side of the foot, once again, we might think about that sciatic nerve. So look out for those super, super important as a part of your picture for your patient who has sciatica. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Remember, we've got loads more resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and on our membership website, member.clinicalphysio.com, a brilliant resource for physiotherapists looking to improve their skills. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.